Hey y'all, welcome back to Windmill Farms in North Mississippi. I'm Grizz, and uh, this Saturday we're going to go on an adventure up the trace. And we're going to look at something a little bit different today than we normally do when we're on the trace. So why don't y'all join us today as we go on another adventure here at Windmill Farms. Hey y'all, it's Grizz. We're here at the Pioneer Days. Um, because of the temperature getting a little higher than they expected, they decided to move it in today. Normally it's outside on the side of the building. Uh, but today we're coming in here and we're going to hit a bunch of these people while we're in here today. But the first place we sit down out here is Miss Brenda's station because she's going to be leaving a little earlier. And Miss Brenda makes these nice little baskets like this, which if you can make this basket, you can make a basket bigger if you needed it. So, but we're going to sit here and we're going to conversation with Miss Brenda about how she does her baskets. And as y'all see, she's getting started on a brand new one here for us. So I'm going to cut off from this wide angle and I'm going to get in close and let Miss Brenda tell us about this basket. All right, y'all? Y'all come on, join us for our adventure today. It's on you. We use a bolt reed, but this could be done with briar vines, grape vines, if you harvest your own materials. Now you said when we were talking off camera that the best time if you're wanting to do this yourself is to get them in the winter time? Gather your materials in the winter time, they'll have less moisture in them. Okay. In the summertime, there's too much green and moisture in the mirror. Your material will break when you're trying to use it. Okay, even after you've let it dry and then rehydrate, it still breaks on you because of the structure you of it. You gather it in the, okay. when the sap is down, and then you can work with a green product, but it's winter green, not summer green. Understandable. And, uh, and it will bend with you without breaking. Now, how many main spokes did you start on with that one right there? There is seven. Okay. This is a continuous weave, and you have to have seven ribs. Okay. I know the ones I've tried in the past that I've showed them about, I've, I've done it like the Cherokee did with a 13. Uh, so I, I knew it was always an odd number. Odd I just number. knew, yeah. I just... Other baskets, some, some type baskets, you have to have an even number of ribs. With this being one weaver that you're weaving continuously around with, you have to have an odd number of ribs. Okay. You and know. it's just inside, outside, right? You're alternating. Okay. Each time when you go around one of these ribs, your weaver has to be on the opposite side it was the last time. The last time it was on the inside, so this time it'll be on the outside. Okay. And then you just those alternate outside, inside, outside, inside. That way you can do a continuous weave without having to go one round. If you have an even number of ribs, you have to go one round, cut, and stop, and restart mm -hmm. to make it alternate. Well, I know with the Chicksaw Choctaw style baskets that I've been trying to do, because uh, that's actually what my heritage is, is Choctaw. Uh, is it's one of those in which it it's that there's a way that you start the bottom of it and yes. that's the way that you can always tell it's a Chickasaw or a Choctaw yes. basket is if you turn it over and look at the bottom of it instantly from the bottom you can tell if this person was doing it in that rain or not. Yes, how they were taught to yes. do it. And I'm about to finish this weave. Okay, now you explain that to me a while ago. When you crimp that, you're crimping it so, so that it will bend, bend at a 90 degree. It, it, yes, okay. and that, that it won't break. Right. Towards the end of your weave and your material starts to dry out some. This material has been soaked so that it will be pliable enough to bend and okay. work. And then as you get toward the end, it starts drying. And you don't want to re-soak it because then you couldn't slide these ends and tuck them in like that. Okay. And so by leaving them semi-soft and not very soft, you're able to do that. But sometimes as they start drying, they will break if you try to bend them. So I always crimp them. This bend I don't, but the last bend I will crimp here. As me and you were both talking about a while ago too, if it starts to dry out on you, you can just spray it with a spritz bottle and just yes. kind of lightly wet it so that it will allow you to keep using it pliable until, yes. you're until you're done. Until you're ready to finish it off. And when you go to finish it off, if you have it too wet, let it dry some. Okay. Is your best you know, way to deal with that instead of trying to rush and do it. I weave the ribs down just like they were a weaver. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, they have to alternate just like the weaver did for it, for it to work. So the up one spokes there are called? They are ribs. They are ribs. And then you have the weaver, which is the actual material that the basket's going around and yes. around. Yes. But then as you lay these ribs down and work them in, you use them like weavers. Like a weaver, yes. Yes. I was just trying to get some of the wording for people so they would know what we're talking about when we're discussing this. I cut that at an angle. It slides down beside and I always put them in on the back side, inside of the basket, and they slide down in there fairly simple. Sometimes I'll use my fingernail if they catch, but cutting them on that angle makes them slide down in there pretty easy. That's like when I cut my leather at an angle when I'm doing my lacing, it does the same thing. So. Yes. You do enough of them, you learn a few tricks. Well, you know, I. I don't know about other folks, but I find that as the more skills that I learn, there's many of them that have aspects that overlap between one and the other. Yes. And what I mean by that is, is many, many times things I've done in leather work helped me in my blacksmithing. Things I did in my blacksmithing yes. helped me in my woodworking. So, I mean, it's one of them things that it seems like once you start learning, I can see why the people used to be able to do a lot of this themselves because once you learn the basic root of the actual artisan, it was easier to add extra knowledge as you went along because it all worked off the same basic knowledge of working with your hands. Yes. And I hate to say it, but a lot of it has to do with feel, too. Just crafting anything gives you the ability to to transfer those skills yes. into other tra other crafts. Y'all, if y'all notice the top of this here, we've only been going for about five minutes and 50 seconds, and she's already got this little basket done, y'all. These is... last are tricky, these last three. Okay. You treat them just like this rib, we're still standing up. Okay. I always weave to behind the first one in front of the second one, and then I go behind the last one. And so when I'm tucking this one in, I'm tucking in behind this, which was the real, which was standing up. Right. And so I'm going to tuck that one in. So at this point, we're basically sewing at this point in time. Getting well, it in there. Weaving. Yeah, weaving, but tucking, I mean, it, yes. But you have to uh, work it like it was still, like those ribs were still mm -hmm. standing up. Yes, ma'am. And so I would go behind this first one, and then I would go in front of this right here rib, which is laid down mm -hmm. as a weaver. So to go in front of that, I'm going to have to tuck this up and under. And then material has to still be pliable enough to bend like that. And you just pull it down. And, and there, now it's in front of it like it yes, needed to be. Yeah. Yes, it was behind the first one, mm -hmm. in front of the second one. Then we're going to tuck it behind this one, and that'll be the finisher. I use my thumbnail just to kind of manipulate some of that work out of my way. And they just slide right down in there. While this is still wet, you can push your bottom and make it flatter if you want. Mm -hmm. And use a prop, like a book or something, and, just and put set some on it on. and put some weight on it till it dries. It'll be dry in an hour or two. Okay. And if you want to change the color of it, you can naturally dye that with a lot of different tea. Onion and, pills. Yes, let, let it dry completely and then soak it for 15 minutes in whatever you want to color it with and then take it out and let it dry again. If now, it's still too light for you, do it product can, again. Can, if you want like a band or if you want your ribs to be different color, can you actually dye this before you actually let it dry before you do it? I have some here that's smoked. This is called smoked reed. Mm -hmm. And I buy it like that. There are dyes they will sell that you can dye, natural dyes you can use. I've used beets. Beets is a really pretty color. Well, one thing we're using right now, because we also do the natural dye, and one of the things that we're using right now that it's because it's in season, we like using things, is the Pope salad berries. The, the purple berries, it makes a beautiful red on anything that I you do. I haven't tried those, but I've tried the beets, and they're real pretty, oh, but, yeah. but it faded with me. I didn't set oh, yeah. it with anything. I now, did, do you set this in a reed like you would clothing? Material with salt with, with, with a mortar, yes, oh, yeah. a salt okay. or something. And I, I did not do that. 
Okay. I don't know how salt would react with the reed, you know, but. You well, could no, experiment with that. Yeah. I think probably something like a linseed oil or an olive oil, something that will hold up. Lots of things will cause this material to deteriorate because it is a natural product. Can you? Do you sometimes need to oil these baskets over time once they've got a couple of years? I on? don't, but I think oil would probably be less of a hazardous material for them. Well, when I say oil, Some things I'm talking you about use like on them could cause them to deteriorate. And stuff like that, just something like coating. Linseed, yeah, yeah or olive oil, oil would yeah. probably help preserve it okay. instead of deteriorate it. I'm not sure. I haven't experimented a lot with that. All righty. Well, Miss Brenda, we appreciate you taking time with us and showing us that little basket. And y'all, that right there was awesome. And it didn't take no time at all, y'all. And that thing right there is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're very welcome.